In this video, we're going to talk about vector equations and more specifically, adding and multiplying these vectors. So how do we represent a vector and what is a vector? Well, first of all, we represent vectors with m by one matrices. So these are column vectors. So as we can see here, the vector u, which we have an underline for a vector, is two one. This means that on a plane, we would write this arrow as 2, 1. So you've done graphs before, you know where 2, 1 is. So it's 2 over to the right, 1 up. And this vector is an arrow. It has a magnitude and a direction. It points to 2, 1. And its magnitude is going to be found using Pythagoras' theorem. So it goes 2 to the right and 1 up. That means that this distance is going to be the square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared, and that is its distance. So we can write another vector out. See, v is negative 1, 3. So v is going to point up here. So this is vector v. What about w? Well, w has more than two entries, so it's not going to live in this plane that is r2. This means we have two dimensions of real numbers. Instead, this w vector has m entries, so it's going to live in rm. So this is an mth dimension of real numbers. So we can't visualize this when it goes more than three dimensions. It gets pretty tricky. So for my examples, we're going to keep it in two or three dimensions. So these are vectors. Now, we say two vectors are equal if their entries are equal. So when we write a vector and we have a1, a2, all the way down to an, it corresponds to the point on the graph a1, a2, all the way down to an in that order. So v1 and v2, 7, 6, and 7, 6, they both correspond to the point 7, 6. So they're both going to point to the same direction. They're going to go over 7, and they'll go up 6. w1 and w2, however, correspond to vectors that go 2 to the right, 4 up. And w2 is 4 to the right and 2 up. So w1 will look like this, while w2 might be a little bit more slanted to the right. So these are different vectors. Just because they have the same numbers. If they're in different order, they'll be different vectors. So v1 and v2 are equal, w1 and w2 are different. So how do we add vectors? What does it look like when we add vectors? Well, let's draw the vectors we have here so far. So we have 2, 1. So that is going over 2 and up 1. So that's u. And then we have 1, 4, which means we go over 1 and go up 4. So that's going to look like this vector here. When we add vectors, we add the tail of one vector, which is the part without the arrow, to the tip of another vector. So we can take 1, 4, and we can start it over here. So we can go right 1 and up 4 and we'll get to this area up here. So when we add v to u, we get a new vector. And this starts at the tail of u and goes all the way to the tip of v. So this new vector here in white is going to be u plus v. So how do we compute it? Well, u plus v, we take 2, 1, and we're adding 1, 4 to it. This is the same thing as taking the vector 2 plus 1 for the first entry and 1 plus 4 for the second entry, which we can simplify 2, 3, 5. And that is exactly where this white vector ends up. So you'll notice when we do this, we get kind of a parallelogram. So if we have a vector that goes like this and a vector that goes like this, 
let's call this A1 and A2. We can add A1 to A2 here, or we can add A2 to A1 down there, and we get the same end result, which is some vector in the center, which is A1 plus A2. So we get this kind of parallelogram here, and this will always happen when you add vectors. So what about multiplying vectors or scaling vectors? Let's take W, which is 4, 2. So this will end up right about here. This is W. And let's multiply it by 3. So this is just 3 times 4, 2. Now we can distribute the 3 inside. So this is really 3 times 4 and 2 times 3 which is equal to 12, 6. So this is kind of like taking that vector three times. So we expect to end up in the same spot. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then we go up to each time. So we should end up at the same spot, and we do. So this is just taking the same vector three times. So we can do it a half, we can do it negative three, we can do it 50 times. This is just a way we can scale vectors. So let's do some practice here. U is negative one, two, and V is negative three, negative one. Let's add these two vectors together. So this is going to be negative one minus three for the first entry and two minus one for the second, which will be negative four, one. If we draw these vectors, we're going to end up at that spot. But what if we subtract v from u? So this is negative 1 minus negative 3 and 2 minus negative 1. So when we subtract a vector, we just go in the opposite direction. So this is negative 1 plus 4, or sorry, negative 1 plus 3, which is 2, and 2 plus 1 is 3. So u minus v ends up at 2, 3. What if we take 3u plus 6v? Well, this is going to be negative 3, 6 plus negative 18, negative 6, which will give us negative 21 and 0. So this is just 21 to the left. Okay, what about a half u? Well, we just take the values of u and divide them by 2. So we end up at negative 1 half, 1. What about negative 5v plus u? So this will be negative 5 times v, so negative 3 times negative 5 is 15, negative 1 times negative 5 is 5, and then we have to add u. So then we end up at 14 and 7. So you can draw these out on a graph and make sure that these are right it's to prove to yourself that you know how vector addition and multiplication works while drawing vectors. So here's the question. Is 3 times the vectors u plus v equal to 3 times the vector u plus 3 times the vector v? Well, we'll prove this more generally next time, but we'll just do one example here. So let's take 3 times u plus v. This is 3 times negative 2 plus 1 for the first entry, 1 minus 2 for the second which is 3 times negative 1, negative 1, which is equal to negative 3, negative 3. If we take 3u plus 3v, this is equal to 3 times negative 2, 1, plus 3 times 1, negative 2. So this is negative 6, 3, plus 3, negative 6, and then we end up at negative 3, negative 3. So we see that this distribution of numbers works just like it does with regular arithmetic. So we'll prove that next time, but as always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I will answer them as quick as I possibly can. If this video helped you, please share it online because it helps me out, it'll help your friends out, it'll help everyone out. So thank you for watching, hopefully you will come back next time.